Hey there, welcome back and in today's video, Bobby Torres of Fright Box Recording is going to show you how to mix metal drums inside a Reaper. So he's going to use all stock plugins and he's also got some goodies for you that you can find down in the description below. So Bobby's been doing this for a long time professionally and he's able to achieve some really, really good pro sounding results with just stock plugins and Reaper. So without further ado, here's Bobby Torres and he's going to walk you through his whole process of how he was able to get this drum sound in this mix. Let's go. Hello Cam, thank you so much for having me on the channel. I'm Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording and let's dive deep into the drum mix of this track. Now this production was mixed 100% within Reaper uh, and not only was it mixed in Reaper, but it was mixed mainly using stock plugins. I have a few other plugins here and there, but the large majority of the plugins I'm using are stock plugins. Now if you do your own recording and mixing at home and you use Reaper, you can download this exact Reaper session that I'm showing you in this video. It includes all of the settings that you see, all the plugin settings, as well as the multi-track of the song that Cam and I have written together. Cameron will leave a link below in this video's description so you can download it for absolutely free. So let's take a listen to the mix of the song as it stands, and then I will dive deep and reveal to you some of my techniques for really making the drums come to life in the mix of this track. Let's check it out. So there you have it, I'm really happy with this mix. Now my goal, especially with the drum tracks, was to achieve a nice, natural, yet balanced and polished drum sound. Now Cam is a great drummer that plays with a lot of feel and a lot of dynamics, so I didn't want to go in there and completely replace all of his drums with samples and make the drum track sound like a drum machine. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to produce a classic, uh, like I said, well-produced track that still sounds like human beings playing in a room together. So let's start off with the routing of the drums. Now I wanted the drums to sound punchy, but I didn't want them to be over compressed. And one thing that people tend to do when they first get into mixing is over compressing their cymbals. So one way that I combat this is that I subgroup my drum tracks, uh, but only my drums, not including my cymbals. So in this mix, we have a kick drum, and then we have a kick drum sample that has a little more attack that's blended in, which we'll cover in a second, a snare top, a snare drum sample that's very quiet in the mix, a snare bottom track, a rack tom, a second rack tom, a floor tom, and a second floor tom, and all of those are being bussed to a drum submix via a folder track within Reaper. So this track here that's called Drums, all of my shells of the drums are being sent to this submix or folder track. You can do this within any DAW, but Reaper makes it nice and easy by just clicking on the track, making it a folder track, and selecting what tracks you want being bussed through that folder track. And again, in this case, all of my shells are being sent to this submix, but all of my uh, cymbals and my room tracks are being sent directly to the master fader, so any of the processing that I have on my drum submix is not affecting my cymbals, which for me is sort of like a secret mixing trick in order to get your drums nice and punchy, but still natural sounding, uh, is to leave your cymbals nice and dynamic so they're not over compressed, but still using some aggressive parallel compression on your drum shells themselves. Now we're gonna get into the processing on the drum submix, but let's start off with the processing on the individual drums themselves before we get to the submix. Now the first kick drum track here is a kick sample 
um, but it is a fatter sounding kick sample. Now with this style of music with a lot of fast double kicks, you wanna hear them nice and clear. So kick drum samples are very, very common, uh, but they can sound natural if you utilize them in the right way. So this sample is one that I recorded out of my own studio. It's a rounder sounding sample with not a lot of attack, but it's very kind of organic and it sounds like a kick drum on an actual live kit because it is unprocessed. So let's listen to this kick drum sound. So as you can hear, it's a little rounder sounding, a little warmer sounding than a traditional super clicky kick drum. Uh, and the way I'm EQing it, I'm just using the stock Reaper EQ. I'm just pulling out some lower mids just to help it sound a little less cloudy. Uh, generally with kick drums and toms, you're gonna wanna suck out some of the lower mids to help clear up the sound because a lot of those drum tracks, when they're close mic'd, proximity effect can build up and lower mids can generally be out of control. Let's hear the kick drum without this EQ so you could hear what I mean. So as you can hear, without that cut in the mid-range, uh, the kick drum sounds a little more cardboard box-like, and with the cut, it all of a sudden sounds more musical and more crisp, and I didn't even have to boost any top end. Now, aside from that, I'm using some basic compression. Again, the stock compressor that comes with Reaper. Uh, let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place on this kick drum. a very modest amount of compression, roughly around five dB of compression. Uh, not a whole lot. My goal here was to just add a little bit of character to the kick, but remember, because it's a sample, it's already super consistent. I'm not looking for extra consistency with uh, this compressor. I'm only using it for character. Now, the second track here is a kick sample that Cam sent me that I loved that was very, very aggressive. Um, and I wanted to kind of blend that to taste with my kick sample, so I had a combination of a warmer kick and a more aggressive kick. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually only using the top end of Cam's sample and it's working great with the other kick sample. So let's listen to this track in isolation. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in here and rolling off all frequencies uh, below around one to 2K. And I'm rolling off the super duper top and focusing mainly on the upper mids. And I'm blending that in with the other kick drum sound uh, just to give it some extra attack. So just to be clear, I'm only using the high frequencies of this kick sample uh, to work alongside the warmer kick sample for a kick sound that sounds like this when combined. So as you can hear, that second kick sample really adds a lot of extra attack to the original kick sound. And I'm just compressing it ever so slightly with, again, a stock Reaper compressor. So far, all stock plugins. Now, up next, we have our live snare track, which is one of my favorite parts of this drum mix. Uh, it's completely live. It's the natural snare that Cam sent me in his drum recording, and I thought it sounded great. I didn't even have to use a noise gate. Uh, the only thing I'm doing here is just some basic EQing, rolling off all frequencies and the super duper subs that we don't need, pulling out a little bit of lower mids and just adding a little bit of top end. Let's listen to the snare top mic in solo. I love it, it's warm, it cuts through, and I didn't have to get heavy handed with a snare sample to add that extra punch uh, to my snare drum sound. Now up next to accentuate the attack of the snare, I'm using a transient controller, again, a stock Reaper plugin. Transient designers or transient controllers are sort of like compressors, but they add attack and sustain in a way that's much more transparent, that doesn't sound as snappy as a compressor, but again, it just adds extra attack in a way that's very, very natural sounding. So sometimes on a live snare track, I use a transient designer to add extra punch before my compressor, and uh, that's what I'm doing here, and it's working out great. Up next, I'm using a stock Reaper plugin just to add extra attack, but this time I'm going for traditional compression, and I'm using a regular compressor. And finally, here is a plugin that is not a stock plugin. I'm using JST Clip. Pretty much my goal here is to just add extra grit and distortion to the snare drum sound just to help it cut through the mix ever so slightly. The big takeaways here are the EQ and the transient controller and the compressor on this chain. This is just the icing on the cake. Now I do have a snare sample blended in here and it's a sample that Cam sent me, but it's very, very, very quiet in the mix, uh, almost inaudible. Let's take a listen to it.
So much like with the second kick drum track, what I'm doing is I'm kind of using it more for the top end, just to add a little bit of presence to the live snare, but 80% of what you're hearing, actually even maybe 90% of what you're hearing is the live snare drum. Again, I'm just EQing out all the low end, boosting a little bit of top end, compressing it a little, and using that same JST clip plugin to help distort it a little and help it cut through with the original live snare top mic. Now here's a trick that I do in a lot of my drum mixes that most people kind of, you know, are confused about when they first see it, but I promise you it is straightforward. For my snare bottom, I'm almost using none of the low end. I'm rolling off all frequencies below around 800 Hertz and I'm focusing only the top end uh, frequencies of the snare bottom track. So when you hear the snare bottom on its own, it sounds kind of funny. Let's check it out. But as you can hear, it works in context of the rest of the drum mix and I'm sending a boatload of the snare bottom to a reverb. So you get more reverb from the snare bottom than actual direct sound uh, from the snare bottom. The reason why I'm mainly focusing the top end of the snare bottom is we already have so much meat from the snare top that I don't need any extra low end from the snare bottom track. I'm using it only for the sizzle and I'm compressing it ever so slightly just to grab a little more snap out of that track. But the majority of my snare sound is coming from that live natural snare top mic. This again, much like with the snare sample, is sort of like the icing on the cake. Okay, moving right along to toms. Now I EQ my toms in a similar way to how I EQ uh, kick drums, pulling out some lower mids to help clear it up. Uh, in this case, I'm boosting a little bit of top end and I'm rolling off all frequencies below around 80 hertz just to make extra room for my kick drum, bass guitar, and my super duper low endy instruments. But overall, that reduction of lower mids is gonna help clear up your tom sounds without having to boost a boatload of top end. I'm gonna just bypass all of my EQs on my toms, which are all EQ'd pretty much the same. And let's hear what our toms sound like without our EQs engaged. They sound great, but a little boxy sounding. I'm just gonna engage our EQs with those mid-range cuts and a little bit of top end boost. And let's hear how much of a difference it actually makes on the raw tom sounds. As you can hear, much more crisp, much more clear, and the toms cut through the mix like a knife. Now, aside from the EQ, I'm just compressing our toms ever so slightly to add some extra punch. And that's about it. Our toms are using only stock Reaper plugins. So now let's talk about the processing that's going on on our submix for the tracks we've covered so far. Our kick drum, snare drum, and toms. Up first, I have an EQ. Uh, and my goal here is to get rid of the super subs like anything below around 45, 40 hertz. Most people don't think to do this, but the truth is most frequencies below 40 or 30 hertz on a kick drum is just junk frequency. It's not gonna add any extra power to your kick drum and it's gonna eat up extra headroom uh, on your mix and it's gonna make mastering much more difficult. So I like to just get it out of there and focus on the frequencies that matter. And in this case, by rolling off all frequencies below around 45 hertz, it's really affecting my kick drum since all other drums are high passed above that. And I'm rolling off all frequencies in the super duper top that we don't need to make room for our cymbals and just pulling out a little bit of lower mids ever so slightly to clear up my drum sound. Up next, I have a compressor that's actually acting in parallel with the unprocessed sound. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play our drums and I'm going to bypass the compressor and then I will re-engage it when the drums are playing back and take a listen to how much extra glue it's adding to the drums in total. Kind of subtle, but if you notice when I have the compressor engaged, the drums kind of almost sound more like a single unit. And that's because I have a compressed drum sound blended in, in parallel with the unprocessed drum sound. Uh, again, I'm in Reaper using a stock plugin. I have my dry drums set to negative three dB and my wet drum mix, meaning the compressor, set to negative 10 dB. Mainly the dry drums without compression, but a little bit of the compressed sound blended in to taste. It's a pretty common uh, mixing technique that many heavy music mixers use on drums. And then finally, I cheated a little. This is not a stock plugin. Uh, this is the Waves Kramer tape. I'm using a tape saturator just to kind of lop off extra transient on the drums. It's not doing a whole lot. It's just extra glue to help the drums sound like a single unit. Um, again, it's not gonna make or break your drum mix, but I'm using it here because I have it. And uh, it's just giving the drums that extra 5% of glue to help them sound like one unified instrument. 
All right, and this leaves us with our cymbal tracks. Cameron sent me a China track, hi-hats, ride, a stereo pair of overheads, and two awesome sounding room tracks. Now most of my cymbal tracks are EQ'd the same. I'm removing a ton of low end. My goal with cymbal tracks, I don't care about hearing my drums in the cymbals. I already have enough drums coming from the direct mics and the room tracks. I want just the cymbals in my cymbal and overhead tracks. And that's why I'm so aggressive with the high pass filtering because the cymbals mainly live in the upper frequencies. So I don't need all the low end and mid range and lower mid stuff. So here's the EQ on my China. On my ride, it's near identical or is identical. And my hi-hat, all the same EQs. Not using compressors on my cymbals, I found that if I over compress cymbals, a lot of times you will over exaggerate the hi-hat, which can get out of control and sound harsh. So me personally, I generally tend to only compress uh, my overheads ever so slightly, sort of like a peak limiter, which we're gonna get to right now. But first, on my overhead tracks, the first thing you're gonna notice is a stock Reaper plugin and it's a distortion plugin. Let's hear what this is adding to my overhead sound on this drum kit. Now it's very, very subtle, but my goal here is to add some extra saturation to sort of mimic uh, drums being recorded through an analog console or onto analog tape. It's just adding extra harmonics in a musical way. And I'm not using anything fancy or expensive. I'm just using a stock distortion plugin in Reaper. Uh, and I have the wet dry knobs set to 50% wet. So 50% of what you're hearing is the dry overheads. And the other 50% is the subtle distortion added with this plugin, just to make the cymbal sound a little more analog. Up next, as you can see, I'm not being shy with the cuts. Uh, I'm rolling up all frequencies below around 1K and pulling out a lot of the harshness in the upper mids around two to three to five to even 7K. So most of what you're hearing, uh, as far as the cymbals are concerned or the overheads, are the upper frequencies above 8K. So by limiting the upper frequencies on all of my other tracks, my cymbals can live freely up there and have space and the super high frequencies in the mix as a whole. Okay, and outside of that, I just have a basic compressor, again, lightly compressing the cymbals, just in case there's a section where it really slams a cymbal that I don't wanna poke through the mix too much, but it's doing very little. Again, I don't like to over compress cymbals and bring out the hi-hat too much. Now, Cam apparently has a great sounding room that he records his drums in at his house, and I'm taking that room and just exaggerating it with some simple, simple mixing techniques First thing is I'm only really using the mid range of the rooms. Let's actually bypass all of these plugins and let's hear the room tracks completely raw. So as you can hear, this plugin is darkening up the rooms and rolling off all the low end that we don't need. Doesn't sound great on its own, but again, it's all about how it sounds in conjunction with the rest of the kit. So my goal here is to focus only the mid range of the rooms because we already have enough going on with the kick drum as far as low end and enough going on at the top end from the cymbals. I wanted some mid range honk from these great sounding room tracks. I'm compressing them ever so slightly to make the room sound a little more aggressive and exaggerated. And then finally a trick that I like to use to make a smaller room sound bigger is I like to take room mics and stick them in through a reverb plugin set to a modest room setting. Now this is a lot different than sticking reverb on your snare or toms or kick or whatever because it's the room track that's being affected, not a close mic. We have to remember room mics are sat way further back away from the kit and they're picking up the kit as a whole. So the sound of this reverb is gonna sound a lot different than reverb, again, that you stick on the direct mics themselves. And let's hear what this is doing to the stereo pair of room tracks. It's just making the room track sound a little more diffused and like the room that he recorded in was slightly bigger and it works like a charm. And it really doesn't matter what reverb plugin you're using. I'm using an ancient uh, Waves plugin that most people don't even use anymore and it's doing the trick. Now on the topic, of reverb plugins, the main reverb I'm using on our drum tracks, and again, I'm not using a whole lot, but the reverb that's on my snare mic, the direct mic, and on the toms, it's all the same reverb, and on the snare bottom is the stock Reaper reverb plugin. Nothing fancy, I'm just using it in a very modest way just to add a little bit of extra power and size to the kit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it back once more and I'm gonna mute the verb, and then I'll re-engage it so you could hear what it's adding to the drum kit. It's 
adding just a little bit of extra power, but as you could tell, most of the room sound that you're hearing is coming from the actual room tracks. And this is a perfect example here that you don't need a huge room uh, to produce a realistic uh, big drum sound. Even if you're recording in a small room, stick up a couple room mics and use this trick and it'll always work in your favor and you'll have a nice, huge, gigantic sounding drum sound. Finally, I'm following up the reverb plugin with a simple cut in the lower mids and a little bit of high passing just to thin out the reverb ever so slightly so none of the low end is jumbling up with the direct mics on the drum kit. Now the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to this drum mix is something that most people, especially home studio owners, tend to gloss over because it might not be as fun as messing around with plugins, but here's the truth. It's something that all pro mixers do and it's so simple and it can really help bring your mix to life regardless of the genre of music that you're working on or the instrument that you're working on. As you could tell here, if you look here, I have a bunch of simple volume automation written in on my snare track and my tom tracks. The reason for this is again, I wanted these drums to sound natural. I really like Cam's feel as a drummer and I didn't want to just go in there and sample, replace it, make everything super ridiculously consistent. So what I would do is go in in any section that might be more technical where the drums might not be being hit as hard. I'll just bump up the snare track ever so slightly to help it cut through. For example, let's take a listen to the second quarter of the verse right after the blast beats. So right here when it breaks into halftime, I had the snare back at its normal uh, volume, but during the fast double bass section, I bumped up the snare by a few dB, uh, just so it's a little more present. But again, I didn't use a sample for that consistency. I just used basic old school volume automation, which again, engineers have been using since the dawn of time. And right here, I'm doing the opposite on these toms where he hits them very hard and I don't want them to be as loud as maybe an earlier section. And I'm just ducking the toms down by a dB or two. Let's take a quick listen. Once more. Simple little volume moves that build up over the course of a mix that help bring life and excitement into a pro level mix. So again, if you're a Reaper user, you can download this exact session for absolutely free, multi-tracks included. Cameron will leave a link below in this video's description and it's all yours with a click of a button. So Cam, thanks again so much for having me on the channel. And thank you to everyone who's watching and hopefully this will help improve the sound of your drum mixes within your future productions.